We have the pleasure of having with us Bernardo uh, Villarreal. Um, he is uh, working at the CIMAN in Mexico. Mexico. Uh, we are both students of Alejandro Allen, so we're very proud to come from the same background. Um, and um, I was noting today that we have the uh, biggest uh, density of Bernardos in uh, <laughs> ever happening with Bernardo. It has never happened this. Um, so we're very happy with that. So, Bernardo, thank you for coming. To the thank you. Thank you, Bucayo, for the invitation and introduction. So, um, so, this is I want to talk about topological components of commuting elements. And this is doing work with uh, Omar Anthony sitting right there. Um, so let's see. Um, so this is the audience of non-experts, I guess. So, so on the topic, so let me just start uh, defining what I mean by uh, spaces of homomorphism. So I'll be considering D groups and and when I say gamma, that's uh, it's going to be a discrete group, right? I'm just going to say it's a group. So let me just start by first uh, taking the set of homomorphisms from the group gamma into the D group G, right? Um, I can topologize this set by just taking it um, inside the product space uh, G. To the gamma, and the nice thing is that when gamma is finally generated, say by generators gamma one to gamma k, I can just identify this uh, set with the subspace of to the k of k tuples, where um, the tuples are just the evaluation of the homomorphism at the generator. So, okay, so why why? Am I interested in in this um, in this set? Well, if I take a say a CW CW <laughs> complex, then if I take also a homomorphism from the fundamental group into the Lie group, to that I can associate a principality bundle by just taking the Gaussian space functures as the homomorphism. Say that's uh, F. This one here, um, and then precompose with the classifying map of the universal cover of X. What's a nice thing about uh, this bundle, well, the bundle E, is that it has a flat connection. Ah, well, if, let's just say X is a of manifold whenever I say it has a flat connection. And the reason is, uh, well, there's a um, an equivalence to having a flat connection that is that, that if the classifying map factors through the classifying space of the leak group with the discrete topology, then um, the loose bundle has a flat connection, right? So, I mean, since the homomorphism here sees none of the topology of G, you would have that. And also the other way around, if you have a flat connection and a bundle, then you, you can show that the map actually factors to the classifying space of the of the D group of discrete topology by just uh, bundle theory and and and, and structure theory. Okay, right. So this home spaces um, carry a G action, right? That just conju conjugate in the the homomorphism, or in the presentation I gave you, just conjugating each coordinate. Um, and the orbit space is what I call uh, the representation space. It's just uh, this uh, rep category. Now, what's the nice thing about this rep space? Well, every point here is a nice representation class of a flat G bundle over, say, a smooth manifold X. So I can I can call the space the model space of that G bundles of Rex, or, or as I said before, just a representation space. So, okay. And 
I can just take a, a flat bundle and just forget about the structure and just take its underlying G bundle. So I get it to uh, I get a map into the isomorphism classes of G bundles uh, over X. And well, the the path connected components of the representation space are just going to um, give me a parametrization of uh, uh, bundles with the path structure. Right? So say the image of this map is only going to cover those bundles which actually have need a path structure. Okay, so I'm actually interested in that question, right? Which bundles and made a flat structure? That's just the image of this space. And then <laughs> even a bundle that has a flat structure, um, what's the space of, of, of bundles, right? That, that, that can be that flat structure. Right? So that's a, say the motivation you can have in the back of your minds whenever uh, you think about this web space. All right, so, let me tell you about three particular cases when this uh, representation space uh, uh, was first studied. And the first one is by uh, Witten. And he considered the three rank torus. Um, and, you know, whatever he was working on, the, so the, there wasn't. So he, this is what I was told that what he was getting was not the actual thing he wanted. And it was because he was um, assuming that a rep space was path connected, which um, uh, the first, the first, um, I guess the first example known was um, yeah, the rep space of Say the fundamental group of the three torus on the spinson group is not created. Then, so along those lines, uh, uh, it's what it took some relevance uh, the, the, the connectedness or, or non connectedness of those spaces. So the other example is um, taking X as the as a as a genus G surface. The genus has to be greater than one, and in, in the case that uh, Bill Goldman was studying, and this um, has a very nice paper about um, the path connected components of this space. So so you can see this as the uh, circle bundles over the uh, genus G surface. And what he was uh, interested in was in this, uh, well, the relation between this, the number of components here and the Mingle-Wood inequality it involves the, the order number of the, of the circle bundle and the, and, and the genus, right? And well, sort of these two, I present these two particular um, examples. I mean, this is somewhere in the late 80s. This somewhere in the late 90s. And you know, I'm I'm gonna be interested in X uh around K Taurus, and I'm gonna try to sort of do the same procedure that Goldman did to study a particular case of, of these rep spaces. And this is all from the point of view of, of Alejandro Adam and, and, and Fred Cohen, which are all oh, they, they we're interested in these home spaces when when uh, when the model group is the integers uh, to the k, and in this case the the home space just has a you know a, a, a nice description, just this for the space of uh, k tuples uh, such that the commutator. Of uh, every pair is just uh, trivial. Okay. Okay, so let me tell you about 
some work on uh, these phases. This is a, well, I kind of like this result a lot. It just tells you what the path to the components of these home spaces are purely in terms of the of fundamental group. Um, and notice here the compact assumption. And well, you, you can get rid of the semi simple thing by instead of taking the fundamental group of G, just by taking the fundamental group of the uh, common tenure subgroup, which is basically the, um, the semi simple part of the, of the meeting. And well, what, one of the questions you could make is, um, can I get rid of the compact uh, <laughs> assumption here, or, or, or in what generality do can I can I keep this kind of result? <clears throat> so that's one, and here's uh, another one from uh, Jose Manuel uh, Alexandra Peset and Juan Soto, where they compute. Well, I'm interested in the topology of these things. So do I better compute the some homotopy groups, right? Um, and what they show is if they, if they compute the fundamental group of the home space, but at the component, so this space is not to be connected. So, so I have a distinguished component, which is the one where the trivial representation lands, right? And they show that this is a, the fundamental group of G to the K. And you can also ask this, right? And I get rid of the compact assumption here. And this is a result also from uh, Jose Manuel, Alejandro and Simon Hitzschacher. Now, if you, if you take a simply connected simple compact Greek group, then you have this um, isomorphism pi two of the commuting pairs. I think Jose Manuel is gonna tell you about this later. Um, and, and this one, I, well, that's like by three or something. Yes, exactly. So, so here the, the the simpleness of G takes a, a big role, right? Um, because of, I mean, the Z, if I'm not wrong, comes from pi three of G. So if I <laughs> if I take away that 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 assumption of, of being simple, then I can I can expect something like this happening. Mm -hmm. So so maybe those two I can generalize, but not this one. Okay, uh, so what about the non-compact situation? So there's a there's a classic result in Lie groups that if you have a compact, a maximal compact subgroup, then, then you have a, a homotopy equivalent, right, between the Lie group and the compact maximal compact. And and Petit and Soto Soto shows that um, you can do that as long as well, you can do that at the level of commuting elements as long as G is the real points of a reductive algebraic group and over the reals. And by that, you can just think that it works for GLN, SLN, PSLN, and, and those kind of groups, but it does not work for um, new polling groups. Okay, and this is an example that um, Goldman noted. So if you consider the high super group, um, just you know the, the three by three. So um, so you consider matrices with three by three with the ones in the in the diagonal of the zero right elsewhere. So this is a Nilpotic group, group of class two. And well, that should be the first example you can look at where, where uh, Petet and, and Soto result does not work. Um, and, and, but this was like way before whatever they were doing, this, 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 this paper of Coleman, where he was looking about well, all other kind of things. And, and well, I can say this, but the home space is whenever this this commuting elements, whenever G is a, a group that is uh, carved out by polynomials, these are actually uh, affine varieties. You just add up more relations to the ones you already had, and 
And therefore, the number of components has to be finite. And that's what Goldman was in, that well, what Kerry's uh, called uh, Goldman's attention, that if you consider the reduced high super group, by that I mean those uh, those uh, matrices, and you mod out by the by the center. So this is this is the center of the of the group. And here I can take only integers and zeros um, elsewhere. And, and well, this one is no longer a matrix group, right? Um, but it's homotopy equivalent to a circle, which is R mod Z, just the, the center, which is a, a, an, a, an R and more out by the by the central subgroup Z, right? And what he find out is that there's a way of, um, of well, sort of count the components here and he thought that it was an infinite number. So, I mean, one of the things he, he concluded that this, this couldn't be a, a variety of them, okay? So this is what I, what I, what I was saying. So the, the, compa, the maximal compact group of this reduced high super group is just a circle. And the hump space here is just, well, this is an abelian group. So the commuting pairs is just everything. And, 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 and this is a connected, connected space. And so there's no retract, well, well homotopy equivalence between the hump space of the commuting elements of the amine group into the ones of the maximal compact. That raises the question: what, 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 what can I say of the commuting elements um, when you use an important leaf group? Okay, and well, that's sort of the purpose of, of this talk, and and what I'm what I'm working on with Omar. Um, and what's the general strategy to study these spaces? So, so uh, this is sort of what uh, Coleman did. Um, with this polynomial equation. So you can take a group homomorphism from Z to the K into G and just uh, associate with a, a cohomology class on uh, of the of C to the K with division C pi one of G by the following procedure. So you, so you take a homomorphism and take the pullback along the universal cover of G. And just fix uh, pick the canonical basis of Z to the K, and just fix uh, a choice of elements uh, of left story in, in gamma, and and then the, the, the co cycle you get is just uh, the commutators of, of, of each pair. Um, and and well, this is the commutator in the in the in the pullback. So it's really just uh, choosing lifts, right? That that that. That um, almost commute on the, on the universal couple. Okay, and okay, so if instead of so the same procedure, instead of taking um, pi one of the torus, you take pi one of the of the surface, and g is just psl two r the cyclic bundles. Then this is exactly what all of the group the, the, the only number of that of that bundle. So it's just a sort of a generalization of of that. Okay, so I want to study this space, the upper unit triangular matrix groups. These are nilpotent groups of class N minus one. And those by itself are not so interested from the, from the point of view of homotopy because all those are contractible. So I better just take quotient by some discrete group, which again, just as the, as, well, the high symmetry group is one of these. I can just take the rightmost corner and zero elsewhere, and that's a central subgroup, and I can just take this portion. And that's again an important group of the of the same class. And well, it's, it's no longer uh, contractible, right? Now it's a uh, homotopy equivalent to to a circle. So I can ask again, uh, what happens? Well, I know it, it shouldn't happen anymore, right? The, the, the uh, analogous result of, of 
of the forming commuting elements into the commuting elements of the maximal compact one. So, okay, so whenever I have this sort of spaces um, modeled by some central subgroup, which is the case of any elite group, uh, well, compact regroup, then it's just easier to study these things. And this is just the, the space of all those commuting elements. And by that, I mean K tuples in which the pairwise <laughs> commutators um, are inside the central group, right? And okay, so what's the relation between these two? There's a ZK bundle um, um, that, you know, the quotient map from G to G mod Z gives you this uh, ZK bundle, principal ZK bundles. So there's a, you, you, you have a relation between uh, the homotopy of one and the homotopy of the other one. Okay, now the previous map that I, that I just, that I just uh, showed that was a uh, generalization of the Euler number by Goldman, uh, it's just easier to look at it this way. So if I take a K tuple in the almost uh, committing tuples of G that land in the <laughs> then while well, a commutator is, a, it's a anti-symmetric, right? So, so it's, it's, I mean, instead of, Choosing the lifts, I already have the lifts here. So I can already go and take the, a matrix with entries ij, just the, given by the commutators, right? And look, these are exactly the same, the same case. Okay. So let me just call this the map of order commuting. And right, so this is what I was saying. So, so the one that that I constructed before is just taking the portion of this one and, and, and compose it with this. And this is just a map of, of commutators. That's, that's what I'm gonna call Psi. And remember that I'm also interested in the rep space or the model space. So I'm all, always have to keep track of, of, of what happens to the rep space. And in this case, uh, well, Z is central. So I can just, co co conjugation makes sense. And, and it commutes in this case, or I guess it, it makes sense here. And over here, I don't do anything because the commutators are central. So if I conjugate them, just don't do anything to them. So this is the right map to look at to whenever you want to understand these spaces. Okay, so the result that I wanted to sort of have in the Newtonian world, as an analog of, of, of the following. So, if, if I if I consider the, the projective unitary groups, uh, just as you know, the unitary groups modeled by by the scalar matrices, there's a very nice result from Alejandro de Man, Mantren, um, Cheng, which. Uh, Gives an injective map, right? This map of commutators that I just that I just talk about um, into this cohomology group, and they show that it's injective, right? For for every um, k and n be equal to one, but it's only surjective if n is that's very called in uh, Moreover, they describe this the the the, the homo well the, the homeomorphism type of each component. And they get this space. So this is the um, uh, well, sigma is, is the number that you get from the uh, so every the, every element in the image of this map is parametrizing the components. So over each of those is a component, and this sigma is just a well. There's a way of writing alpha in a in a nice way, so so that the coefficients just divide each each other uh, so, and so one and then the next one. <laughs> and um, this is what sigma is. It's just a part of all of those. And this is the, say the sigma fold um, on order, uh, the on order sigma tuples, right? Mod out by the translation action of the, of the torus of rank K. All right, so this is, 
what I want to have in the reporting case. Mm -hmm. Which which twistings on the right hand side are not reached by this map because it's uh, which, which ones exactly? I don't, I don't know. Because it's so important that there are projective actions that are not given by the by a projective mode. But that doesn't so. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I mean, those. I guess those are the bundles that don't have a flat structure, and, and I don't. I don't really know which one. Uh, <laughs> um. So, okay, and and if I think about the unitary groups in the following census, any 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 compact Lie group can be embedded in one of these UNs. Um, so there's an analogy of that in the important world, where any connected important Lie group can be embedded in the unit triangle or matrix group. So this is what we get. So when 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 G is uh, this group I just presented, the unit triangular um, matrix groups modeled by the center, the modeled by this uh, central subgroup Z. So, but this is at the level of the home space. And so what we prove is that uh, this map of order commutators is injective. Uh, well, I guess this can be one. I don't know what there's a to say. So for, for every K, um, and and it's going to be surjective if and only if. Uh, the floor of k over two is less than equal to one than than n. Sorry. So that's already a, a nice parameterization, parameterization of the components, but we also know the homotopy type of, of the components, and it actually is a quite nice space. So this is just a uh, the stiffel manifold of, of complex uh, embeddings, and this is just a k torus, right? So so. So there's an extra number here, R, which is sort of the, well, I guess in this case, both N and R were encoded in the, in the previous result in that sigma. Uh, so, so, so that R is actually the rank of the, of the form uh, omega in this H2. Um, so, so, okay, so what I want to, Tell you a little bit is how does the proof go? Um, how do you get this kind of statement? Um, and especially what the role of this rank uh, plays here. All right. So the key observation is that there's a way smaller group that I can look at, and that's a generalized high So, so the, the, the elements there are. Ah. Right, so the elements there can again, I'm just going to take a you know, a subgroup of upper unit, yeah upper unit triangular matrices. And I'm gonna have, say, A1 a to AN. And here, I'm gonna have a Z coordinate in the center, and then from E1 to PN. And then, well, in the upper unit triangular groups, here I have an X. Right, oh, that's just an important matrix, and 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 the high symmetric group uh, H two M plus one R are those where um, where the important matrix is just zero. So I just have zero everywhere, and just a row vector and a column vector. And and that's the <laughs> That's a key observation. So, so, so I have an, an inclusion of the almost commuting um, elements of the high symmetric group into the ones of the um, unit triangular ones that are is zk equivariant. And the, the action here is just a coordinate-wise action um, 
in this in this one like this is by addition and well i mean once you have that then you only have to deal with the mineralized hydrogen groups and that just uh, makes everything just nice and smooth and then okay so So I, I'm, I can just now study the map of order commutators uh, at the level of this uh, uh, high single groups, generalized high single groups. Okay, so this is what I was saying. So, so I have a row vector A, that one over there, a column vector B, and this is scalar, uh, the scalar R, uh, sorry, Z. Okay, so now the only thing I need is just to put things together in a nice way that I can understand really well what's going on. I mean, our first attempt was just to, you know, you have a bunch of uh, variables here, right? Because I have K of these matrices and, and, and we just wrote out what the, what the commutator is. I mean, you can just, uh, you know, sit down and, and write down all these relations. I mean, they're not so horrible. It's just a, a, a product of these two vectors and they add up, but you have a K of those. And well, you have a, an anti-symmetric matrix of, of possible solutions for, for those. So it's a, kind of a, a big equation. Um, but, okay, so, so, so the, the smart way, smart way of doing, going about it is just to uh, put all those vectors into a single matrix. So, right, so I have um, now K of each of these. So I have a matrix of, of, of 2N by K and the uh, scalar entry, I, now I'm gonna have K of these. And this is a two-step, Important group. Um, so all the commutators are central. So I can extend the previous map into the whole uh, K tuples of elements in the high speed group, generalized high speed group. So now I'm going to study this map. And okay. And 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 now um, I need a special. Uh, elements in the in the anti-symmetric matrices. This is going to be this uh, matrix E to R. So that's a, a matrix of this form. So I have blocks um, of this way of zero, one, minus one, zero, and I can have uh, more zeros here. So E to R um, is a matrix, it's an empty matrix matrix in um, and it's K so so R is uh, less or equal than K over two, the, the floor of K over two. So once you have these matrices, now that everything just, just works uh, smoothly and it's zero elsewhere. So, okay, so if, if you rearrange those uh, columns and vectors in the, in the K-tuple elements in the hands of the group by say uh, in, the, in the even rows, you, you, you put the column vectors and in the odd rows, you put the row vectors, you get again the matrix M and then the comment here map just has a very nice description. And it's just this one. So, so, so you take the transpose of M, you multiply it by this. Uh, E2N is the maximal one. So it's the one that has a, uh, all the blocks, all these blocks all the way to, to the last coordinate. And then, you know, this map has all the, all, all the right properties, right? It's, 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 um, well, okay, then what do I mean by all the right properties? So, uh, okay, so, so I want to study the pre-images of 
of this uh, map of conduit, right? I, I want to see what the space is on that fiber, right? And okay, this is something I have to note. The Z, so the central coordinate plays no role in the commutator map as it should, right? Uh, but it will play a role later when we analyze the uh, rep spaces. Okay, um, so to understand what the three images of those uh, anti-symmetric matrices, um, well, I, there's an action of BLK in, in the anti-symmetric matrices that actually gives you that there's only two times the floor of K over two um, types of anti-symmetric uh, anti matrices there. So A of those, so, so what this map is saying that is that the rank would be the only invariant uh, that you will be interested in, right? So, so, so you have uh, any, any two uh, disymmetric matrices that have the same rank, then the, the pre-images are gonna be homeomorphic. So I only have to look at, you know, uh, two times the floor over K over two matrices. That's going to be this E to R that I wrote over there. So this is a, a variety, right? And that is a, you know, that you mind that those equations here. And this is just a pre-image of, uh, of this map of the, of the um, form E to R, right? And here I keep track of the, you know, so, so M, I can see this as a linear transformation that, has a domain R to the K and lands on R, R to the 2N. And R is the rank of this, uh, of this uh, symmetric matrix. So I want to study these things. And, okay, so, so I can forget about the K. Um, by taking this uh, inclusion, this is just a, you know, taking uh, rows equal to zero. So I have this, uh, sorry, um, in the rearrangement that I told you, this is taking columns right of K equal to zero. And then I, I have an inclusion here. And these are, uh, this is sort of what allows us to talk about the homotopy type of these things, because this one here, as a very nice description and, and of the homotopy, that's all of it. So to, to do that, uh, let me call SP to an R, the real symplectic group with respect to the, this is that one. Because this is, I guess this is not the usual one that one works in symplectic uh, geometry, but it, it, it's just uh, the same thing. So this is what you can show. So, so the space um, X to R and to R is just this homogeneous space. And, and this is just um, a symplectic steeple. And well, you can see the elements here as um, maps from R to the to R. Um, that preserve the E to N form, right? So, um, so, so the, like the symplectic structure there that it preserves. So M, you can see that as a um, map, right? From R to R into R. To end that restricted to um, this form, E to N is the form E to R. So symplectic embeddings of R to R with this form into R to N. And that's just a steeple manifold. And you know, as a stable manifold, it has a homogeneous presentation in terms of uh, lower, well, these quotient spaces. And 
Well, that's all the observation you have to do because you know the homotopy type of these things. So, so the maximal compact subgroup of the symplectic, I guess I have to say the real symplectic groups, not, not the compact one, it's the, it's the real symplectic group. Uh, its maximal group is a unitary group. And, and then you can just show this by, by you know, inspection of the associated um, uh, long exact sequence of homotopy groups and the five lemma, you, you can show uh, this homotopy group. Okay, so that's it for the first question, right? So, so these are all connected. Right, uh, the, the spaces are connected, and uh, I told you that the fibers are all homeomorphic to one of these. So, so all the connected, all the pre images are now connected. So this map um, of, of order commutators is is now injective, and the homotopy type is this cross R K mod out by the Z K action, which gives me those uh, uh, torus that I that I had before those, those tori. Okay, now the, 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 the part that we don't understand very well is the, the, the representation. So, so there's two actions going on. And so, so the first one is the action by, by conjugation of the, of the whole Heisberg group. And well, what, what you can see once you figure out what the action is, is, I mean, we have this uh, uh, presentation from the from the uh, K-tuple, right? The matrix and, and, the, and the central section, oh, sorry, central quarterly. And, and this conjugation action really doesn't do anything to M, it only affects Z. So as, as I told you before, the commutator map didn't, affect at all the, the central coordinate, but now the conjugation action sees everything just in the central coordinate. So, so things are now really different. Um, so the first um, quotient map that I have is gonna be uh, this one. So, so, so as, as I told you, the, 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 the first entry, the, M, the matrix M is not affected by the conjugation action. And then on the Z coordinate, I'm going to take this uh, code here. Okay, this, this right hand side is still just the Euclidean space, right? So I don't, I don't really have much trouble there to, to understand the homotopy type. But the problem comes when I take the ZK out. Now I have to go out by this, but this subgroup, sorry. And this is just, well, it's hard to handle. And so, so remember, so the rest space coming from here, first I can, I can just take the uh, conjugation action and then uh, the ZK action or, or, or vice versa. And, okay, so this is something that you have from the theorem before. Because I mean, as I told you, the, 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 the commutator map does not affect anything here, so you can conclude that from from then. But uh, I I wanted to give you some 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 insight here that the M does, is not affected by the conjugation action, so really you don't you don't change anything in this map. So the components here only depend on, on those uh, symplectic forms. On well, those two forms, sorry, and uh, the the rank here, sorry, the the range here uh, had to do with this uh, vanishing of 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 the S K and R in this situation. These are just empty. But what about the homotopy type of 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 the components there? And what this. So, so the, 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 the following things uh, haven't been really uh, been checked carefully. So, so what follows just the only idea, right? So, well, okay, this, this is right. So 
so I, I'm just gonna understand this space after I take after I take the conjugation action. And that actually has a very nice uh, uh, um, description. So just take a matrix and take vectors in the kernel of that matrix. But notice that this kernel uh, now varies the, the, the rank, right? The dimension of this, of this subspace. And that's, that's what messes things up. So uh, you can see the inclusion from O into this uh, uh, component. This is a homeomorphism after taking uh, the conjugation orbits. <laughs> but the problem here is that now the Z, this, is, this is not equivalent with respect to the ZK action. And now the action looks this way. So if I add an integer Y, then I have to project into this kernel. And well, you have not much control of that. But then, well, so, so, so what you need to do for the representation space is after this, you have to take a, the, the ZK, the ZK orbits. And well, this thing over here, so the, the lattice here is gonna decrease the rank. So I'm just gonna have, instead of product sorry of rank K, I'm gonna have various product sorry of, of, of various ranks. So this is what we think is going on. So you have a, a stratification of this uh, varieties just as you have from, from, from matrices by taking each rank. Um, so, right, so, so, so you can stratify this thing and by stratification, I mean that the closure of each of those is the union of the, of the previous ones and, and itself. Um, okay, so, so I have this strata on the, at the level of co almost commuting elements. And when I take this H2 M plus one orbit, uh, the orbit of the generalized Heisenberg group with respect to conjugation, I have this, remember this pair of, of elements where, where, where the, the, the vector is on the kernel of M. And well, this is the first thing I'd like to claim that this is actually a vector bond. And if you look here now, the fiber depends on the, the strata, right? So, so this I here corresponds to this rank over here. And now the, the rank of all these fibers is decreasing. But again, I get this, the stratification now of this O space that I, that I described before. Um, now I need to take this UK orbit. And this is the, this is what we don't, well, okay. So, so, you, so you can take the ZK orbits and that's just, uh, you know, putting out at ZK, uh, uh, an R to the K minus two R minus I. So, so, so you get probably a vibration here, right? Over this, um, uh, so, so those were the matrices of rank um, this one. And these are the terms of the, of the strata and those are the fibers. So what, so what can I do with something like this? And, and well, something that you can say is um, when they sort of look like the steeple manifold that I had before. Um, so it, it, but up to all your characteristics and the all your characteristic of the, the steeple manifold, to work this out, that's just zero. And well, there's a there's a spectral sequence associated to uh, uh, stratifications uh, of cohomology with um, um, compact support, compactly supported cohomology, and um, that there's another characteristic associated to 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 stratified spaces, which is additive. So I can just add all of these ones and use the fact that it's a vibration. Well, long story short, all this uh, tor right here have all the characteristic zero. So those will be killed whenever I add them up. And I will only end up with the last one, which is uh, this R K minus two R. 
So I only have to understand what this one is. And um, that means I only have to understand this one. And this is what we think we can show that it's, this is actually fiber over some isotropic Grossmannian. And, and, and it also has uh, all your characteristics zero. So, you know, up to, up to all your characteristics, the, the components of the rep space behave like the components of the, of the humps. Uh, okay, and I think that's all I have. Thanks.